Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Perceive 2021. Please give a warm welcome to our distinguished guest, Soren Shah, a senior product manager for Snowflake, who will be speaking about deriving meaningful insights from unstructured data. Welcome to our stage. Hello, everyone. My name is Soren Shah, and I'm a product manager in Snowflake. I work on the data lake and the storage components in Snowflake. And as part of that, unstructured data management is one of the functionalities that we recently launched. In this presentation today, we are going to see how customers can derive meaningful insights from unstructured data stored in Snowflake using uh, Snowflake and Clarify integration. But before we do that, let me talk a little bit about evolution of data management. Extracting meaningful insights from data is not new. Customers have been doing that for, for years. Long back ago, the data was mostly structured data. It was stored on tables in data warehouses. But as data evolved, there was a need to add unstructured or semi-structured data. JSON, file formats like JSON, XML, and newer file formats like Parquet, these became very popular, and concepts of data lakes or lake houses became much popular as well. These technologies were more or less file-based plus table-based. But nowadays, especially in the recent few years, the proliferation of unstructured data or the explosion of unstructured data has increased significantly. Now the data is borderless, or at least customers want the data to be borderless. What I mean with that is while the data comes into the system, it can come from any system. It can come from your data centers. It can come from mobile applications, servers, your clients, partners, databases, OLTP databases, wherever. And that data is not guaranteed to be structured or semi-structured. In fact, many times the data is unstructured or in a custom or a proprietary file format. While the data goes out of the system, the data can go to your analyst, your data scientist, which are, which are in your organization, or it can go also go to your clients, your partners, your customers. So the data is really now a borderless, uh, borderless or there is a need for that. And that's why Snowflake decided to invest, or we decided to invest in unstructured data. For a long time, or from since day one actually, uh, Snowflake has had support for structured data and semi-structured data. However, as I mentioned before, customers had this need that they wanted Snowflake, or they wanted a solution where they can put all of their data, and they can manage, govern, process all of their data in a single platform and in a single repository. And that's exactly what we did with unstructured data management. We provided a platform where customers can now store all of their data, irrespective of the data shape, data size, data format, anything like that. Since day one, as I mentioned, Snowflake has had support for structured data and semi-structured data. Over time, we've added a bunch of functionalities or a bunch of value for these types of data sets. The value can is ranges from optimization of data to management, transactions, security, governance, metadata extraction, sharing, collaboration, replication of data, cross region, cross cloud, and much, much more. And what we want to do is we want to provide the exact same value for unstructured data as well. We are starting small right now, but as we grow, we will continue adding all of this support for unstructured data as well. But there is more than that. Now you may have already know, you may already know about this, but Snowflake Data Cloud is really a global network where customers are mobilizing all of their data. This really eliminates data silos and copying of data where they can securely share their data with their clients, their customers, their partners, their suppliers, and whatnot. They can securely replicate their data and very easily replicate data from one end of the globe to another end of the globe, irrespective whether that is on a different public cloud or the same public cloud. Now, just imagine for a moment if customers had an ability to do this for all of their data, including unstructured data. Now that really opens up a lot of use cases 
and we have already started seeing that since we launched unstructured data in public preview. This global data network is really powerful and that's what brings, uh, brings a lot of value for customers' data architectures. So what does unstructured data management provide? Uh, these are all of the functionalities that uh, are, are there and I'll go over them one on one by one. Customers can store and access unstructured data. So they can store unstructured data and they can access it using REST APIs. Customers can not only store that, but they can also govern unstructured data using Snowflake's fine-grained rule-based access control and other governance capabilities. What's cool about these governance capabilities is that they are cloud agnostic. So no matter where, whether your data is on Snowflake or on Azure Cloud or GCP or AWS S3, it doesn't matter. As long as it's governed by Snowflake and managed by Snowflake, you will get the exact same syntax and the same commands that work for all different clouds. This in itself is a lot of value which our customers are feeling right now. Customers can manage unstructured data very easily in Snowflake. They can create stages with directory tables enabled and directory gives them a very powerful capabilities of listing the data very fast and at the same time searching and processing the files as well. Taking governance one step forward, customers can create scoped access for their unstructured data. What it really means is that they don't have they don't anymore have to give access to a bucket or to a folder to, to uh, their analysts or data scientist or whoever is the client. They can just give scoped access to that single file or a set of files based on some different, some easy parameters or some met, based on some metadata. Mm. Customers can share, as I mentioned before, customers can now share unstructured data on the data cloud and they can just leverage that the powerful capabilities of the data cloud to send that data uh, without actually making copies of that data. Lastly, customers can process the unstructured data using the Snowflake platform itself or using Snowflake integrations with partners like Clarify. Today, we are going to see a demo of exactly that functionality. So let's talk about how customers can derive insights now from unstructured data. In Snowflake, we have a concept called external functions. Using external functions, customers can make ex API calls to external APIs like Clarify API, for example. Here I have an example of an external function called Clarify Predict. In reality, it takes multiple parameters and we will see that in the demo. But let's, for simplicity, I've just put a very pseudo code over here. So that API takes in a URL or the URL of the unstructured file. It processes that unstructured file in, Snowf in Clarify and it returns back an array of tags or array of features which are related to that unstructured data. Uh, the API is executed or API is hosted uh, or accessed via the API gateway in AWS using this. But I can, if I don't want to use the API gateway on AWS, I can use Azure Functions or Google Cloud just as the same way. And then the way to call that external function is just a select command. So just a select command with the clarify predict, you send in and it returns an array of tags to Snowflake. Now customers can use this powerful building block to build continuous data pipelines for processing unstructured data. So to process unstructured data, they can really create a very simple end-to-end -end pipeline. Let's look at how this pipeline is created. Let's imagine that customers' data or unstructured data are stored in a Snowflake stage. If you don't know what a stage is, a stage is essentially a pointer to a cloud storage provider. Uh, it can be a bucket or a folder. On top of the stage, there is a built-in directory table. So directory table gives you all the file catalog capable, all the file catalog of all of your unstructured files stored on the stage as form of a table. So you can now very easily run queries. You can search using the directory table. You can run the queries. You can process the files. What directory tables gives you is one more additional capability is that you can create a stream on the directory table. 
the stream on the directory table essentially it gives you capabilities or lets you know which are the new files that were added to the directory since we last processed and that's how you can create a continuous data pipeline finally there is a task which processes the the unstructured files pointed by the stream and then the task uses the external apis or external functions to call clarify it returns back information and then the the tags information which is returned as part of an array is stored on another table so once you create this whole pipeline then it just continuously keeps on working behind the scenes there is absolutely no maintenance needed to maintain this pipeline you keep adding more unstructured data to the stage the directory table picks that up the stream will know which new files are added the task calls clarify it gets information back and then stores that data onto another table to see it in a very like a simple sql set, syntax or commands here is how you can do that so you, here is how you create a directory table and you do a select from the directory table you create a stream on the stage which is uh, which has the directory table set up which is the stage is the images stage over here you can now select the files from the stream and this will be the new files which are added to the directory or to the stage and then you create a task which executes uh, you know on a scheduled basis and then it calls the clarify or the process image which is the clarify api to process that this is very simple syntax but the actual syntax i will show it uh, in the demo in just a few minutes so let's look at a demo now of how Snowflake and Clarify integration can be used to derive insights from images. In the demo, we are going to use uh, images and we are going to extract demographic tags from those images. In this demo, we are going to see how you can integrate Snowflake with Clarify APIs to store stuff, the unstructured images in Snowflake and then call the APIs to extract some information from the images. In this case, we are going to extract demographic information from the images. So to start with here, I have an API integration called Clarify APIs. It uses an ARN role, uh, AWS role, and it uses a, uh, a URL or an endpoint on API Gateway. So let me explain this. So if you go to Clarify, I have here, I have a Lambda function, uh, whose, which is triggered by an API gateway, and the API endpoint is the endpoint which I have specified in the Snowflake API integration. I also have the ARN role, which is authorized to execute functions on this, uh, or execute calls on this API endpoint. So that is how you create an API integration, and API integration really creates a trust relationship between Snowflake and AWS so that we can, so Snowflake can execute or make calls on that API endpoint. Now what happens in that API endpoint is we have a Lambda function over here, and that Lambda function is, uh, is has some code which makes actually calls to clarifies APIs and executes uh, or sends out the unstructured data from Snowflake to the Clarify APIs. It extracts the demographic information from there. It compiles that information into a set of rows and sends the rows back into Snowflake. So that's the, the Lambda function. Uh, if you want to know more about the setup, there are two uh, help articles. Uh, one is the AWS Lambda functions with Clarify. This is a really nice help article that I used to set this up. And then there is another article which is how to integrate Clarify AI uh, models and external functions in Snowflake so that Snowflake, uh, so that you can use that to execute uh, Clarify models or API from Snowflake. So next I have is an external function called Clarify Predict. Uh, it uses a type of a media. It uses few parameters, which is type of media, the URL of the media, uh, what is the workflow ID, uh, and then app ID and the token and it returns an array of tags from the API, okay? So uh, in terms of stages, I have an, a stage called an image is stage, uh, which is on my demo account on, uh, on S3. And uh, I have the directory enabled on this stage. So if I do a select star from the directory, I'll see that there are a bunch of files in the directory, uh, or these are mostly image files in the directory, which, is, which are present. Um, so these are all the images. Uh, now what I can do is I can call the Clarify Predict API 
I can see that this is an image. Here is the URL to the image. Um, what demographics? So what is the workflow? So I want to extract demographic tags from the images. And here's my app ID and my personal token. And when I execute this, uh, the unstructured file uh, or the URL to the unstructured file which is stored on Snowflake is going to be sent to Clarify. Clarify is going to send the tags back. And it's already done that. So if you look at the tags over here, uh, the tags, it's saying that there is a female, there is a male in the picture and the both of them are between ages three and nine. So let's look at the image. So if you look at the image, we'll find out uh, that over here there is a female there is a male and both the kids are between the ages three and nine so so it's pretty accurate the the clarify predict apis now the next what i want to do is store these tags information into a table called demographic tags and then create a view to flatten out that array so that i can very easily run analytics on top of that so I've already done that for a few images. So you'll see that, you know, there are a bunch of tags here, uh, female, Indian, male, uh, ages between three and nine. There is uh, a white uh, person and uh, yeah, a, a few, and there are, there are some people with between ages 20 and 29 and some infants between ages zero and two. So, uh, let's look next on how we can build a continuous pipeline uh, so here i have a stream called images stream which is on the stage called images and what the stream does is stream identifies which are the new files that are added to the stage so that we can start running processing on that then i have a task which wakes up or uh, every two minutes and it executes and it executes only when the stream has some data in it and what that the task does is it sends that image to Clarify Predict API. It gets the, uh, the demographic tags and then it stores the demographic tags into the table that we just showed. And then it also stores the URL to the file uh, into the demographic tags folder or demographic tags table. Uh, let's look at the task history over here. So if you look at the last 10 task history, the task has always been skipped because the stream doesn't have any data in it. So let's do something interesting. Now we can go to the folder and we can add some data here. So if I go add files, um, let's look at some pictures, which may be like group pictures, so which is more interesting. Let's pick this one and upload. So the picture has been uploaded now let's go back and refresh our directory table so if we refresh the directory table it's going to say that one new file is added to the directory table so if you see one new file has been registered to the directory table if i run a select star on the stream it's going to say that there is one file which is newly added to the stream and if we look at the metadata dollar action it says that the file is an inserted file I can go and look at which file was it and it was this file there is a group picture over here that was added looks like some celebration happening and now when I go and look at the task history we'll see that there is one task which is scheduled to run in just about a minute or so so we can give it a minute and then we'll see when the task is executed it is going to go it is going to process that image using the clarify predict apis it's going to extract the metadata information and then store that metadata information or the demographic information into the de demographic tags uh, the task still says scheduled but after this uh, what you can do is you know i have all of the images which are stored and i'm basically uh, just doing some some graphs so i'm i'm looking at you know of all the pictures that are uploaded uh, what is the ratio of females to males so this is the ratio of female to male what is the ethnicity so there is uh, a lot of indian there's, a, there's a, just a couple white people a lot of kids between ages three and nine or their pictures between ages three and nine and a few people between the ages uh, 20 and 29 
So the use cases for these are quite a lot. Like uh, you can imagine that you know you have a conference or you have a big event or a public event that's happening or a rally that's happening, and a bunch of pictures are being taken over there. And what you want to do is you want to just uh, analyze those pictures and and just get a basic sense of the demography into that event. Or sometimes you may have a continuous Twitter feed that's coming in with some hashtag. And for that Twitter feed, you basically look at all of the images, you process them, and you find out uh, some demography information. And that's when you can identify that some some big cultural event is happening or some other event is happening. So let's look at the task now again. The task should have executed by now. Uh, so we'll look at the task. It's going to return back. So the task succeeded, which means the uh, the, the image was processed. If we look at the stream now, the stream doesn't have any more information. And if we look at um, these, this, uh, the chart, the charts will now be updated because there will be more data or more images being added. So that's how you can create a continuous pipeline in, in Snowflake using Snowflake and Clarify, where you can store all of these data into Snowflake and you can manage them using directory tables, streams, and tasks. And for all the new files that are added, you send them to Clarify to process them, get the information back, and store into Snowflake for further analytics. Okay, that's it. Uh, so thank you for listening. And here are some of the resources which I mentioned in the, in the demo as well. I showed them in the demo as well. If you want to know more about Snowflake's unstructured data, you can look at the launch blog. It has pointers to some of the documentation and other capabilities that we launched. The two helper functions or the helper articles, which I showed in the demo, uh, they are over here, AWS Lambda function and Snowflake and Clarify integration. They go more into the depth of what, more, what else can be done using the integration. Thank you. Thank you so much, Saren. It was a pleasure. A big round of applause from our virtual audience. We will see you at our next session.